With BMW's plug-in hybrid petrol-electric 330e model, the conventional 320i variant's 184 horsepower 2-litre petrol engine has been matched with an electric motor and a larger battery to create quite a package. Now you can have it with the estate body style and X-Drive all-wheel drive too. Not everyone wanting futuristic engine technology wants their car to also look futuristic, to look like BMW's i3, for example. If you're buying from this Bavarian brand and you want a petrol-electric power plant, then the 330e plug-in hybrid offers a more subtle way to go. You get 37.3 miles of all-electric driving range when the car's charged up, and that enables the creation of some impressive overall stats, up to 217.3 mpg on the WLTP combined cycle, and as little as 30 grams per kilometre of WLTP rated CO2. Those figures fall only fractionally with this touring estate body style. Take some time to understand BMW's thinking here, and it's hard not to be impressed. The current G20 series 330e plug-in hybrid took a big step forward over its predecessor. The main difference between the two cars found when it comes to measurement of the all-electric driving range, thanks to increase in battery size from 7.6 to 12 kilowatt hours. That's made a big difference, whereas with the previous generation 330e, the range was rated at only 21 miles. With this current G20 series 330e design, BMW claims up to 37.3 miles of zero emissions motoring from a fully charged set of batteries. In other words, if you have a pretty typical daily commute, you might never have to fuel up this car to complete it. As you might expect, this kind of cleverness comes courtesy of a very advanced power plant indeed. In this case, a combination of the 184bhp 2-litre petrol unit from the 320i mated to an electric motor incorporating an extra boost function. This can increase power to as much as 293 horsepower, reducing the 62 sprint time to 6 seconds exactly. Uh, the hybrid system's extra weight does drop maximum speed slightly over that of the ordinary 320i, but it's still rated at 143 miles an hour. Plus, you'll want to know that the brand's X-Drive four-wheel drive system is now available on this variant. Let's cover off the things you'll need to get used to in driving this PHEV 3 Series variant. Uh, there is automatic transmission, of course, that's BMW's usual ZF 8-speed box with paddle shifters. Uh, the drive modes are a bit different though. Uh, sport is the only setting that's carried over uh, from the conventionally engine model. In normal motoring, the car will default to its preferred hybrid drive setting in which uh, the clever software automatically determines for you the optimum combination of uh, combustion and electric drive. Alternatively, if battery charge levels permit, you can select electric mode, which liberates a bit more punch from the AC motor, although things do peter out a little above 50 miles an hour. Uh, your other options are either sport mode or better still, extra boost mode, which is the only one in which all 293 brake horses can be released. You'll want to be reassured that the handling purity of the conventional 3 Series hasn't been diluted by the slight extra weight of the PHEV powertrain. Now, broadly, it hasn't been, uh, which is something helped by this Mark 7 3 Series model line's adoption of the aluminium-rich cluster architecture platform that's these days used by the brand's larger models, a platform that's 25% stiffer than before. This has been a major contributor to weight savings over the previous generation F30 series model of up to 55 kilos. From this optimum starting point, the development team then added in a whole range of handling updates, uh, with the most significant addition being the special so-called lift-related dampers. Uh, now these clever shock absorbers, they incorporate structures uh, which provide some extra damping at the extremes of wheel travel. And uh, they are standard on all models, uh, allowing quite a firm sporting setup to be adopted. But it's also one that's able to deliver a fluent ride over tarmac imperfections. Now, thanks to that, uh, this car is able to combine a setup for Silverstone with something that works equally well on the North Circular.
This isn't the kind of plug-in hybrid model you'll buy if you want to make an eco statement. Unless you really know your BMWs, there's almost nothing to visually differentiate a 330e from any other 3 Series saloon, unless you happen to spot the side panel charging flap. Uh, the 3 Series styling theme by now should be familiar to almost every business buyer. Uh, classic cues like the kidney grille at the front here, uh, the sharp lines, the flanks and the powerful rear end are all present and correct. The cabin looks predictably smart with chrome finishing and high gloss surfaces. Uh, this M Sport trim model gets the full live cockpit professional package which gives you a 12.3 inch virtual instrument binnacle screen and a 10.25 inch center dash iDrive monitor. Uh, there's some clever stuff incorporated into this pricier setup including gesture control and what BMW calls an intelligent personal assistant which works a bit like the Siri or Google Assistant systems that you might use on your phone and is there to answer questions that you can voice to the car as you drive it. There's a respectable amount of rear legroom for what is a, a manageably sized car. Uh, there's certainly more room to stretch out here than was the case with the previous F30 generation 330E model. Uh, the distance between the front and rear seats having been extended by 11 millimeters. Uh, there is slightly more headroom too than there was before. And BMW says that this cabin is now wide enough to take three child seats side by side, although only the two outside positions come with Isofix attachment points. And out back, well, the 330E Saloon's luggage bay measures 375 litres. That's 105 litres down on a conventional four-door 3 Series model. This Touring Estate 330E has a 410 litre boot, and that's extendable to 1,420 litres. That's 90 litres down on a conventionally engined 3 Series Touring model. The 330E now comes in both saloon and touring estate guises, plus there's a choice of either rear-driven or 4x4 xDrive formats. You get four trim levels to choose from, SE, Sport, M Sport and M Sport Pro Edition. Prices start at around £40,000 and rise to around £50,000. As with all plug-in hybrids, you have to have automatic transmission. Uh, the xDrive setup commands an extra premium of around £1,500. Uh, there is a premium of £1,500 for this touring estate body style. Key rivals include uh, two models from Mercedes, the C300e and the CLA250e the Volvo S60 T8 plug-in hybrid, and if you're prepared to compromise on a premium badge in return for a bit of extra space, the Volkswagen Passat GTE and the Skoda Superb IV. Even base SE trim gets you plenty of kit that previously you'd have had to pay extra for on a 3 Series. Things like adaptive full LED headlamps, a parking assistant that automatically steers you into spaces, a reversing camera, acoustic side glass and three zone air conditioning that allows rear passengers to set their own climate. Uh, BMW has even standardised its lovely welcome light carpet which illuminates the ground around the front doors when you get into the car or step out of it at night. In addition, pretty much all the stuff you'd expect from a mid-sized premium executive model is present and correct too. So, tick off alloy wheels, 17 inches on the base SE models, along with front and rear park distance control parking sensors, auto headlamps and wipers, power folding heated mirrors, an alarm and LED illumination for the tail lamps and the front fog lights. Inside, buyers get a leather-stitched sport multifunction steering wheel, cruise control and an anti-dazzle rear-view mirror. Despite the fact that these days there's no longer the government contribution towards purchase price, uh, which undoubtedly helped to boost sales of earlier versions of the old F30 Series 330e, BMW still reckons that this plug-in derivative will be a strong seller. The installation of a more capable 12 kilowatt hour lithium-ion 
high voltage battery has nearly doubled the potential electric driving range to as much as 37.3 miles and it's increased the all electric top speed potential to 68 miles an hour. Charging time for the 12 kilowatt hour battery is around two and a half hours from a conventional seven kilowatt garage wall box or a plug-in public charge point. Hook up to a domestic three pin socket and the charging time will be just under five and a half hours. As usual with plug-in hybrids, the official WLTP combined cycle fuel figures up to 217.3 mpg for the saloon and up to 201.8 mpg for this touring version need to be taken with a pinch of salt. But the important thing is that the government believes the quoted CO2 return, which can be as little as 30 grams per kilometre in the saloon or up to 32 grams per kilometre in the touring. Either way, this means a super low benefiting kind taxation rating of 10%. Of course, it's unlikely that you'd ever actually achieve the quoted MPG and CO2 figures in the real world, but the important thing is that the government believes them. Hence the attractive tax breaks which will come as part and parcel of 330E model ownership. Here, BMW has brought us a hybrid 3 Series model that makes real world sense. The previous generation 330E struggled a little in that regard with its relatively restricted all-electric driving range. Fortunately though, technology has moved on and this current G20 Series 330E model demonstrates just how far. If you are thinking of a high-spec diesel engine version of this Bavarian contender, we think you really have to look at a 330E as a realistic alternative. The waiting lists for this variant suggest that many potential customers already are.